Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on my channel and another Topic Tuesday. I'm sure you all pretty much know the drill by now, but if not, Topic Tuesday is just a weekly prompt from a Instagram, which I have linked down below as well as my own Instagram. And it's just asking you questions about nail polish and you can either answer it here or on Instagram, whatever, because I'm very long winded and like to make these questions way too in depth. I like to do it here. So prepare yourself because this one is kind of a longer one today. The question is, what is the biggest factor you consider when buying a nail polish? So I did a little brainstorming and I have five different things that I kind of think about when I'm buying a nail polish, not necessarily all at once. I don't, you know, look at each every each and every nail polish and think like, does it meet all five of my criteria? These are just things that I think about either consciously or unconsciously when I'm picking out new nail polish. So first one I think is pretty obvious. This is kind of what everybody probably thinks about and it's, do I like the color and do I like the finish? You know, I don't think there's really any colors or finishes that I actively avoid buying except for color. I tend to avoid like white or like lighter, like off-white type colors because <laughs> like I said in a previous video, I feel like white just looks like teeth on my nails. The only time I really buy white is if I need it for a nail art or like a base for another color. So white's not really like a color that I buy. And as far as finish goes, I rarely buy any kind of like frosty polish. The only time I'll ever buy like a frostier polish is if it's in an overarching collection that I am buying the full collection and it would just be like one that I didn't have. So I'll buy it then. But I feel like a lot of brands, at least brands that I purchase from, don't really do frosty polishes anymore. I think a lot of people find that they look dated. And for me, I don't have an issue. It's not that I don't like the finish. I just think it's hard to work with as far as it looks really brush strokey. And it's also just kind of the colors that come in a frosty finish. They're just not usually my top favorite, like the, the saturation levels. I feel like usually they're like a lighter, like less saturated version of a color, like a really like pastel, almost white leaning blue or something like that. And that's just not my favorite color. So the next thing that really sucks me in, and this is probably the thing that really like kills my wallet as far as nail polish goes, or really just any type of collectible, is the name or the theme or the IP or intellectual property that they're using as inspiration behind the nail polish. I think that there are a lot of people who care far less about this section and, and they find it a lot easier to just pick and choose based on like color and theme. But I've always been a huge like collector type person. And so if I see something that surrounds something that I like, I really grab a hold of it. Like pretty much anything Star Trek themed, I will buy because I collect Star Trek memorabilia. Like I literally have marbles with uh, Kirk and Spock's face on them. So it's just like, that should tell you, I will buy literally anything if it matches like something that I already collect or am nostalgic for. So for example, like Sally Hansen, the, um, they really locked me in when they released that first like Crayola line. And I was like, okay, I gotta buy all of these. And that was fine because they're a lot cheaper, but they had a lot. And so I bought all of that like first initial release. And then they released like the metallic crayons. And I was like, well, I already have the whole first you know, run. So I got to do that. And then I think they released one more run of like different crayons. So I bought those. And so I have literally all of the Sally Hansen crayon ones. And I just, those are so cute. I love them. Um, and another one that got me was China Glaze did two iterations of Sesame Street. And I watched so much Sesame Street as a kid. Literally, sometimes I still will find myself going on YouTube and looking up some of the old like songs and like creepy little like music videos they used to put up just for like nostalgic purposes. Like, do you guys remember the, the pinball machine one from Sesame Street? Like, love that. Um, and the weird like dogs with the human hands. I don't know. I, maybe I'm just really strange. But yeah, so that really sucked me in. And even one that I did resist buying 
was the Live Love Polish SpongeBob Trio because I am obsessed with SpongeBob. You know, me and my brother and sister, that's like all we watched for like a decade. And so I really liked that because the colors were really spot on as far as SpongeBob goes, but I managed to hold myself back. I don't even know if it's still available because I'm trying not to look at it because it was kind of expensive for a trio of polishes, but I have a feeling someday I'm gonna break on that one. So up next is uh, the bottle or the brush itself will kind of tip me over. So a big example of that, I have two, uh, Nailtopia. I was like, that bottle is ugly and weird and I just want to own one to see what it's like. And um, I still stand by the bottle is pretty ugly. The cap is really strange, but it's interesting to hold it, to use it to paint your nails. I think I bought one just to try it and then I got um, a couple for free from Ulta when I worked there and like through like gifts with purchase and stuff like that and so that really sucked me in just because it was a weird bottle and another one that really got me well actually the, f the first example of this ever getting me was Julep because the bottles were just so like long and skinny and interesting I thought they were cool they don't fit into my drawers very easily because they're so narrow it I have to like put them like double stack wide just to make the width of one normal nail polish bottle and it kind of skews the drawer it's a huge pain but they are cool bottles and then the biggest one the, the most expensive one that ever got me was smith and cult because those bottles are absolutely beautiful they look like little art pieces and it's just like i couldn't resist i bought a couple i think i bought maybe three on my own I think it was two or three. I did like, yeah, I did three because I did a little bit of a mini review over here. And then um, I was like, yeah, they're really expensive. I don't think they're totally worth like the full price, but they're really beautiful, really cool. And then somebody was selling the, like a bunch super discounted. I think it was like they were selling five for a super discounted price on the Reddit Lacarista Swap subreddit where you can like buy, sell, trade, use nail polish, or it doesn't have to be used, just nail polish you own. And um, so I bought those two just to, just to buy them, I guess. But yeah, so the bottle and the brush like itself, like just the brush cap, I guess, really does get me sometimes. Actually, I forgot one more. The, the actual most expensive one that I ever blew a bunch of money on just because of the way I liked the bottle is <laughs> the Christian Louboutin nail polish. Like this, this is a scary bottle. Like it... I'm always afraid like when I bend over my helmet, I'm gonna poke my eye out with it. It's a little bit intimidating. Maybe I should stick it on one of the shelves over there. But I just love that it even like comes in its own little box as if like the bottle itself wasn't extra enough. So that's just one more bottle that really sucked me in. And I've worn that polish a couple times. It's really pretty. It does look like the, the bottom of a Louboutin shoe. Another factor that I consider when buying nail polish is like the level of innovation that's going into the polish, whether it is like via the applicator or like the idea behind the nail polish. So for example, if you watch my Crete review, my Lil Yachty's uh, Crete review, I really love the innovation behind the product. I think it's a really cool idea. And I think that it will spark interest in people who previously didn't have any interest in nail polish at all. And in fact, I'm almost positive it did because I even got a few comments on that video from people who were like, this is my first time wearing nail polish. I bought Crete and like asking me for suggestions on like how to apply or like base coat and things like that. So I think that Crete really did a good job as far as innovation goes. Now, of course there were some, you know, minor kinks in, in their first launch. I think that that kind of happens for everybody. Like the white uh, was pretty thick. They reformulated that. It seems like a lot of brands have trouble formulating white. I mean, we saw Hollow Taco had the same thing. So it must be something with the pigmentation and the way you mix up a white polish that it's just kind of a universal issue that you kind of have to get over that hump. But yeah, I found that just like the packaging and like the applicator itself to be very innovative, very cool. So the other brand that I was sucked in because of innovation factors was To Be Frank Nails. Now recently I did do a review on them and I will try and link that here. You can see I have both positive and negative things to say about the brand. You know, I didn't like the price point so much and I felt like the way they talked about um, 
men's hands are too big for standard nail polish bottles. I thought that was a little bit weird, uh, but I did like the cap they use. Now it's this huge rubberized cap. And we've talked about the rubberized caps before with like Orly polishes. And these are great, but they're a little bit like thinner and like sloped in versus like the To Be Frank is just this one huge cap. And I just feel like it's so easy to grip. You know, I know somebody who has rheumatoid arthritis and their hands get very swollen. There are days where it's really hard for them to make a fist. And I think that, you know, it's, it's a lot harder to bring your hand in like this to hold the bottle versus when the cap is like this big, you don't have to flex your hand as much. So I felt like that was really innovative in that way, at least. And so I thought that was really interesting. And that was really what pushed me to purchase those polishes. Okay. And the last thing that I really consider when buying a nail polish, and honestly, it really is the last thing, like this is not as high on my list as it probably should be. And it's probably not as high on my list as it is on most people's list, but it is how will I use this nail polish? So I think that most people, you know, when they purchase a polish, they think like, do I have anything in a similar finish, you know, that would make this a little bit redundant? How can I use this for nail art? How can I use this for stamping? I very rarely consider <laughs> those things like I should. Cause for me, nail polish isn't just about wearing it. I know that sounds like insane, but it's like, I like to organize and arrange and just look at and move around and touch it. Like it's like a tactile thing as well. So it's like, it's not my most important thing as far as like, how will I wear this color? When will I wear this color? Because honestly, I'm gonna wear it whether it looks good or not because I just like wearing the polishes, you know, and appreciating each polish as it is and, and that sort of a thing. So I always tend to try and make it work. And even if a polish is of like lower quality or it doesn't apply really well, I just figure out something. I figure out a way to you know, use it at least every now and again, because I enjoy, some people don't enjoy having like more problematic polishes, but like I enjoy trying to figure that out and problem solving it and whatever. So yeah, those are my things that I consider when purchasing nail polish. Let me know down below. Is there uh, anything that we kind of align with? Or like, do you think of the same things? Or is there something that you consider that I hadn't even thought of? Let me know down below. I love to hear from you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.